Taper turning operation on a lathe. We are setting up to cut a number 4 Morris taper. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set up a telescopic taper attachment to cut the number 4 Morris taper. If you're new to my channel, Shop and Math, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. The number 4 Morris taper has approximately 5 eighths per foot, which is about 52 thou per inch. This number is very important because we're going to use this number to set up our actual taper attachment. Okay, I know what you're saying. Number 4 Morris taper is not 52 thou, but we're going to round it to that. We're going to check over 4 inches, so 52 thou times 4 is going to be 208 thou. So, when we move our Z distance in 4 inches, our X distance is going to read 208 thou on the digital readout. The first thing I want to do is clean everything I possibly can. Okay, that way there's nothing jamming or binding. Then, you, before we actually start our setup, what I want to do is know how much taper I need. So, per inch, a more, number four Morris taper is 52 thou per inch. Okay, and we're going to check over four inches. So what I want to do is take 52, multiply it by 4, which is going to be 208. Okay, so I know that over 4 inches, my cross slide is going to move in 208 thou. To engage and disengage the taper attachment, we must lock these two nuts down. These two nuts must be locked down. So. What I do first is I loosen these screws off here and here. There's two of them. There's always two of them. Okay, those two screws are a little hard to see. So this basically represents what those two screws would look like if you could actually see them from above. On most of our machines, we replace the bolts with actual wing nuts. Another issue that we run into is people are over tightening these. That's why they're wing nuts. They should only be finger tight. And this is a telescopic taper attachment. So you cannot turn this handle at all. If you turn this handle, bad things happen. No, what happens is it starts going straight. Watch this, I'm gonna do a demo. So now if we watch, see how they're both moving? Let's say, oops, I accidentally moved this handle. So now, when I move this, see how it has the backlash in it? So it'll go straight. So what you'll get is a cut that's taper straight, taper straight. And that's the opposite of what we want. Okay, this should visually demonstrate what I was trying to say in the video. And also later on in the video, if you see me put a straight edge up against the workpiece, this is what I'm trying to identify. In some cases, if you just bump it slightly, it can be a very slight amount that this straight line happens. And the only way to see it or visually identify it is if you have a straight edge up against it. So now we're ready to check our taper. Spoiler alert, I've already set this one so it will be right. So I'm going to go back. Now I go forward until both these pieces are moving. I zero out, or sorry, both axes are moving. I zero out. Now I want to move forward four inches. So I go four inches. Oops. And I want to be 208 thou, which we are. So then what I would do at this point in time is I would lock these two bolts down. Just snug them down. There's not a lot of pressure on them. You don't have to worry about them moving or anything. And then double check it again in case by tightening them, it moves somehow. Set the compound rust to about 25 degrees and use the compound rust to infeed to get your diameter sizes. If you notice, the compound rest is not set in line, okay? So you want this compound rest to be set off probably about 25 degrees. It doesn't have to be this steep, but it's okay if it is. It cannot be in line here because what happens is this handle here will hit this handle. And we don't want that because then what that does is create a flat and then taper it then flat every time you hit this handle. Okay, before we start, we always make sure that both of these guys are turning. We go in, we do our approach.
Okay, you also want to keep a little bit of back pressure on here. So by allowing your hand to ride across that handle, it stops any jerking, jerking you say. Makes it a little bit more stable and gives you a bit better finish. Okay, so now I'm putting this guy on. I'm just going to put this on very gently. It's not being stuck on. I'm just pushing it on. Now, this indicator is up against here. You can see that it's actually up against our piece. To check to see the fit, normally I would just grab onto it and jiggle it, but on camera, you can't see fit. So I put an indicator up against there, and I try and jiggle this back and forth. Keep in mind, just by pulling on it, makes the part move so there's like no play in this at all so this was a really good setup it is extremely difficult to see without putting a straight edge onto your workpiece you can see it now right what happens is it makes the checking fixture jiggle when you put it on it doesn't sit flat and it can also be something silly like there's burrs or something else on there well hopefully you picked up a tidbit of knowledge from this video if you want to see other great videos check out my youtube channel shop and math and always please like and subscribe it's free and it'll help me out all you have to do is click on the icon of my face and i'll do the rest also have a great night Thank you for watching.